Got to get back to Tesla and Elon Musk and whether he's fit to run a company in his emotional state. Market watcher David Barnes is with us now. Is he fit to run the company in his current emotional state? Well, obviously, I don't know enough about the real emotional makeup. I yes, think you do. You read the article. <laughs> is he fit to run the company? I, or I, not? I think that we know enough as far as the actual behavioral maturity. This is unacceptable behavior. Right. The tweet was unacceptable. And the thing in the article you didn't get a chance to allude to in your comments, this attack on the short sellers is silly. Yeah. There, no news becomes bad news because someone bets that it will be. You just prove them wrong or you don't. Mm. The short sellers are not making his life hell because they're betting against him. Well, that, was an emotion, that was an emotional response to the people getting at him, the short sellers. That's the right. The people who think the stock's going down. That's so so the way to overcome it in a healthy way is to outperform and prove them wrong. So bottom line, in his current emotional state, he's not the right guy to be in that position at Tesla. You agree with that? I wouldn't even render an opinion. He's a creative genius. Tammy and I were talking offset, a parallel to Steve Jobs at Apple back in the day. You have this genius, but he had a difficult personality. They got to manage it. But I think that the way he's behaving as a public CEO is unacceptable. The SEC is involved. We'll see what so, happens. So you'll leave it at unacceptable. It's unacceptable behavior. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be that CEO. You're off the hook. That's, That's okay. Good. That's fine. That's just fine. That's I tethered fine. that okay. Huh? Mm. Now, I want you to address something that uh, President Trump brought up this morning. Yeah. I'm going to put his tweet up on the, on the screen so everybody can see it. But the gist is... He wants, he's thinking about yeah. going to a six-month reporting period as opposed to the three months that we've got now. What say you? So he's uh, asking the SEC to look at that, what it would look like. And so my thought was, it was very interesting, the tweet. It was like the silliest reason I could imagine, but a very intelligent potential policy. In other words, this idea that the business leaders are saying this is what will create more jobs, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. But I very much agree that it would be some form of remedy against this short-termism, and I think that there would be a benefit in the markets to them having a longer time period and not being so caught in this shorter window. But if it's a six-month window... Uh, that restricts my view of how the company is performing, me as an investor. But, and it leaves us kind of blind, and it leaves us at the mercy of the analysts, because they're the ones who are going to give me reports frequently. Yeah, I mean, I think that right now we're already at the mercy of what the companies are saying and in a three-month window that is highly fallible because circumstances change so quickly. So this eliminates a lot of the fallibility that will be there in what they're saying. I'd rather get better information every six months than worse information every three months. And I also don't believe investors should be investing in 90-day windows. Now, that's not the government's business. If someone wants to do it, they can do it. But from my vantage point, it will be healthier to reduce volatility in the market. Yeah, because you're a long-term investor. Uh, all yeah, yeah. real investors are, Stuart. That's right. Well, there are traders and there are investors. <laughs> and, and you said investor, so I'm, I'm an investor just like you. All right. Got it. Uh, China reopening trade talks this month. Let's just, but let's, I wanted to speculate for yeah. a second. And I hate speculation, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. If there were some kind of deal with China, yeah. what happens to the stock market? I think you got a taste yesterday of with this vulnerability, which is, by the way, two directional. There is such a um, ability for a melt up in the market at announcing some sort of big comprehensive deal. Mm. There also is the potential of a meltdown if they were to come out and say we're at a stalemate and China's doing this and we're, you know, that, that fear of some sort of an erratic response. But I'm talking about the fear to the upside. Uh, right now, the shorts are petrified. You had a 400 point move up yesterday on the talk of a potential kind of yep, preliminary meeting and I think that's how significant this uh, trade tariff issue is in the market. It has priced in a lower level of valuation mm -hmm. and that once they can remove that impediment, the natural direction of the market, because the economy is so healthy, corporate profits are so good, would be significantly higher. I don't know if we're going to get that. I believe we will eventually. I don't think it'll happen for the midterms, but, but I would love for it to. But if you get it, you're talking melt up, which means a big rally. That's exactly right. Mm. Okay, well, let's leave it at that, shall we? There we go. <laughs> End the speculation. End the speculation. Dave, you're all right. Thanks for joining us. Sir. Good to be here.